Hello and welcome back to the series on Spacey 3x tutorials for digital humanities or anyone who's interested. We're going to be talking again about how to work with custom factories. In the last video, I, I introduced you to the general concept of a custom factory, and we just had to do a simple little silly toy example where it just capitalized the document and it printed it off. In this video, I'm going to show you a real world example in which you'd want to use an actual factory to do something specific to the doc object. So to demonstrate why this might be useful, let's first take a look at the output from the int, uh, the NER or the entity, uh, NER component of the basic spacey small model. So let's import spacey, execute that. And then we're going to do uh, a text, make a simple text here. John enjoys playing basketball in Berlin in June. It's a fake little toy text example. And we're going to say doc is equal to NLP. Or actually, we're going to make the NLP object. This is going to be uh, spacey.load. And it's going to be in core web SM. So the small model here. And now we're going to say doc is equal to NLP. And we're going to pass in that text object. And if you're familiar with my NER series, you're going to know what happens next. We're going to say for int and doc.ints. And we're going to print off the entity. And what you'll see here is that we've got John, Berlin, and June. And if we were to print off the entity and the int label, we would see that we have a person, a GPE, or a geopolitical entity, and a date. What we're going to try to do in this video is eliminate John entirely from the output. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, why would this ever be useful? It's useful in a very specific situation. Imagine that you have a corpus that has regular entities, so places, dates, things like that are all going to be really useful for off uh, by just using the off-the-shelf spacey models, but the spacey models do not generalize well on, for whatever reason, your person tags. So this has happened to me when I was working with South African historical texts. And so one of the ways you can overcome this is to use the spacey off-the-shelf models because they might be really good at certain things like dates, etc., and then create your own custom model for training it on specific people in South Africa. So re recognizing personal names. So in order to do that, you don't want to try to train an existing model because you'll actually have what's called catastrophic forgetting and your model will become very bad. Instead, what you need to do is you need to create a custom component that will eliminate all person tags from the data. And then you can let your own model go over and identify people. So let's go ahead and try and do that in, with this exact same script. We're going to comment some of these things out there, just delete them entirely. And now what we're going to do is we're going to say from spacey.language, lowercase there, import language, capital L there, just like we saw in the last video. And I'm going to go ahead and actually restart this entire, um, this entire notebook, just so we can kind of start fresh. And what we're going to do now is we need to kind of do that same thing we did in the last video. We need to create that custom language dot component with that. And we're going to call this person. Let's call it person removal. Why not? That's kind of what it's doing. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a function person removal. And that person removal function is going to take one object, and that's going to be the actual document that goes through the spacing uh, pipeline. And now, if you were to look and examine what the doc.ints object is, it's a tuple. And in this process, we need to modify that tuple. But remember, tuples are immutable. So we need to convert that tuple into a list. So we're going to call it ints. We're going to make that equal to uh, list doc.ints. So we're going to convert that tuple temporarily into a list. And we're going to say for int, and ints, we're going to iterate over the ints here, not the doc.ints. And we're going to say if int.label is equal to person, so if it's a person tag, we want ints.remove int. So we want to remove that entity from it entirely. And then we what we need to do is we want to say ints is equal to tuple. We're going to convert it back to a tuple. And then what we're going to do is finally we're going to say doc.ints is equal to ints. So we're going to reintroduce it and overwrite the the ints. And then we can re return that doc object. And now at this stage, you have a doc object that has received all of that NER data, all the entities marked up, 
and it's been altered to remove any instance of a person being tagged. This is so that our model can then run over the data and mark up entities that are people correctly. And now what we need to do is we need to say language.component, and we're going to say uh, person, person removal func is equal to person underscore removal. And now when we execute this, oh, we have a syntax error. What have I done here? I forgot I have to actually put this inside of my person removal. There we are. Now it should work correctly. And I have misspelled component, it looks like, right here as well. So I've managed to mess up that line just a little bit more than usual. Okay, now we actually have that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to call that spacey small model in core web sm and let's take a look at its pipes so we're going to say print nlp dot pipe names and we see that we don't have the uh the personal removal let's go ahead and add that in just like we saw a few videos ago by saying nlp dot add pipe no need to create a pipe anymore remember and we're going to call this person removal so we're going to add that pipe into it and now we've got the person removal added into it. And now we can print off NLP pipe names again. And we see that we were able to actually have that object in there. Now that we have that object in there, and now that we have this custom factory, let's go ahead and create that doc object again. We're going to pass the NLP over it. And we're going to say for int and doc.ints, print off int and int.label. And we see that we've managed to remove John from the output entirely. This is an example of a real world scenario in which you would really want to use a custom factory to do a specific task to solve a specific problem. Again, like I made known in the last video, you are not going to be able to save this custom component into your model in the script here. You're going to have to do a few extra steps to make your model packageable. But for right now, you'll be able to execute a custom component in the script along with your new model. That's going to be it for this video, though. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below. And like always, if you feel generous, please do contribute to my Patreon, also linked in the description down below.